When I was a kid, my dad was still in medical school, then I had to go through residency and fellowship, so we moved around a lot. Because of that, I've been to a lot of schools and I've dealt with a lot of different dress codes. Dress codes from different schools, even if in the same district, can differ greatly, and the effects they have on students and the school environment are noticeable. Dress codes are often put into place to help promote good behavior and a healthy learning environment, and to emphasize focus on academics. However, an overly strict dress code can be detrimental to a school environment and to student well-being by hindering creative expression, taking focus away from education, being biased or oppressive, and putting unnecessary economic pressure on lower income families. Rules not being enforced uniformly can lead to feelings of discontent and unfairness in the school environment, which is ultimately disruptive. I moved to Northwest Albuquerque with my mom in seventh grade and had to buy a completely new wardrobe when I transferred to James Monroe Middle School because literally none of my clothes were appropriate for the strict dress policy they had. It was really difficult financially for my mom to spend money on clothes I didn't really need. Overly strict dress codes often force families to spend money on certain types of clothing that they wouldn't otherwise and can put needless financial strain on lower income families as it did with my mom and I. At James Monroe, you're allowed to wear only solid colored button-up or polo shirts with absolutely no pattern or design, and some symbols specifically like skulls were banned outright. Something as insignificant as wearing a Green Day shirt would get a student written up, and after three write-ups, they'd get suspended. Suspensions over matters as trivial as small dress code infractions take focus away from education. Students are far more likely to be focused on their wardrobe when the dress code is strict, simply out of anxiety over getting in trouble and feeling shamed or feeling like an outcast. There were two or three days right before summer break that students were permitted to wear casual clothing, but even then there were rules about what we could wear, and a lot of those rules were directed solely at female students. For example, female students still weren't permitted to wear anything that would show shoulders such as tank tops and were barred from wearing bottoms more than four inches above the top of the kneecap. In case you didn't know, Albuquerque is a desert. Think tumbleweeds, rattlesnakes, and visible heat waves on the horizon. It's hot there during the summer. Aside from being blatantly sexist, this strictly enforced policy requires female students to dress in a way that leads to them being uncomfortable in the 100 degree heat, which makes it harder for them to focus on academics. At James Monroe, every student had to wear a lanyard with their school ID in it at all times. If you weren't wearing one when you got to school in the morning, you weren't permitted in whatsoever. It was common among my group of friends to wear band or TV show lanyards instead of the lanyard with the school's logo in order to feel a bit more individualistic. The majority of the time it was perfectly fine, but the teachers and administrators weren't consistent with their enforcement of the rules, so on occasion you'd get in trouble for small things. I got in trouble twice for supposedly breaking dress code because of my lanyard when all my friends, who were probably less than 15 feet away, were equally as guilty. The rules not being enforced consistently led to a lot of frustration on both sides and made the environment overall more combative. Studies have found that dress codes are often disproportionately enforced by race and gender. A survey done in 2018 found that black males, black females, and multiracial females reported higher rates of dress code infractions and overwhelmingly higher rates of being disciplined. Black males reported feeling the dress code criminalized them. Black and multiracial females reported feeling that the dress code sexualized them and blamed them for creating a negative school environment. By targeting minorities and disciplining them more, it prevents them from getting the same academic opportunity as their white peers, which is oppressive. I moved to Charlottesville with my dad and older brother in eighth grade and transferred to Leslie Walton Middle School. The dress code at Walton was pretty reasonable. There was no gender specific rules and no strict ID policies or threats of suspension. The dress code was lenient, but was also enforced in a consistent manner. In opposition to the belief that strict dress codes or uniforms are necessary in order to prevent students from focusing on their wardrobe, this lenient dress code made academics the focus of school life by allowing students to not stress over the possibility of their wardrobe getting them in trouble. 
Just the difference in the general vibe of Walton versus James Monroe was astronomical. The aura around Walton was ridiculously more positive than at James Monroe. The students and teachers at James Monroe were constantly at odds with each other, but at Walton, the leniency allowed for a stronger connection between students and teachers, making the school climate much more cooperative and beneficial. Dress code policies provide guidance to students and parents as to appropriate attire for school or a school function. Some guidelines are helpful in order to familiarize students with appropriate workplace attire, but strict dress code policies often become disruptive to the school environment and can be oppressive, especially when enforced inconsistently.